Okay, ready, set, go. Here we go. Yo. Which one? From yesterday? Here's your note sheet from yesterday. I'll get that to you. Two more problems. So, uh, staple your sheet that you're getting right now to the back of your packet. Yeah, the notes. Oh, uh, yeah, the problem be about page. Okay, everybody good? Okay, here we go. So we pick up with example number 11. We gone yesterday? So yesterday's packet. Anybody else need notes from yesterday? Stapler's making his way around. Who's got staple right now? Okay, it's on its way. It's taking about two and a half minutes a person. Okay, here we go. Two planes flying toward one another. Plane flying from flying from LA to New York is traveling 500. So we've got LA. We've got New York. What? Oh, it's just a bigger plane. All right. So this is 500. <laughs> and then New York to L.A. is going at 650. Plane flying from New York to Los Angeles is going at 650. How long have they been flying if the cities are 2,450 miles apart from one another? All right. Well... First of all, you need to classify what kind of problem this is. Time, distance, and rate. So as soon as I start to sell it, I think miles per hour. So miles is distance, hours is time. So distance over time is equal to my rate. Now, in this kind of problem, um, again, they're 2,450 miles apart. Um, we kind of want to try to understand a little bit about their rates and their distances and their times. Uh, usually one of them is the same. So are they traveling at the same rate? No, they're not traveling at the same rate. Okay. Are they traveling the same distance? And again, Nathan pointed this out earlier. We can do all those kind of problems. We can even account for the curvature of the Earth. However, unfortunately, your mathematics is limited because you only know pre-calculus. But multivariable calculus, we could solve that. So unfortunately, we're going to limit it to our understanding as a class. But someday you can ask that bigger question. We could compute that for you, but you wouldn't understand what we were doing. Okay, so sure. Yeah, stop by my class sometime. Schedule time. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There are diff there, there are many questions I, I do not auto know how to solve. So if I had to go back into my math class from college, there's some I would remember, and there's many that I would forget. So, um, you know, it kind of gets to that point where it starts to escape your brain. Um, but that's okay. So, but here we are. The rate is not the same. Do they travel the same distance? No. In fact, the one from New York is going to travel farther. Why? It's going faster. Do they travel for the same amount of time? All right, Will, stand up. Will, stand up right here. I need somebody to keep track of time. Who's going to be a timer? Timer. Okay, Foster's got it. Okay. Will, you're going to walk at uh, just normal speed. I'm going to tiptoe. Who's got a faster rate? Will does, okay? Foster, he tells when to start 
and then staff us when we cross. Boom! Okay. One point one six. Three point five six. Now let's just think about it, you guys. How long was Will walking for? Three point five six seconds. How long was I walking for? Three point five six seconds. Who walked farther? Will. Uh, who walked at a faster rate? But well, we walked at the same time. We walked the same amount of time. So these planes are going to fly for exactly the same amount of time. So I want to solve for time in my variable here. And so as I cross multiply, rate times time is equal to distance. And if we divide both sides by rate, time is equal to distance divided by my rate. Do you know the distance of the plane from L.A.? No, we'll call it X. X over 500, 500 is the rate, is equal to, do you know the distance that the plane from New York traveled? No, but we know the total distance is 2,450. So what can I write for an expression that would uh, have X in it? 2450 minus X. So now I will consider the plane from New York. The distance of the plane from New York is 2450 minus X over its rate is 650. Let's cross multiply. 500 times 2450. One million two hundred twenty five thousand. Which seems like a large number, but compare that to our national debt. It's really quite small. Seems small. Uh, minus five hundred X equals six hundred and fifty X. Gather terms. 1,225,000 is equal to 1,150x. Divide both sides by 1,150. And I get 1065. Does that answer my question? The question is how long they've been flying. So I'm solving for time, right? This represents distance. Well, time is distance divided by rate. So the distance is 1065. The rate that's represented is 500. So if I take this and divide it by 500, I get 2.13. Uh, somebody said earlier that, uh, so can we just write 2? No, you, no, you can't. A two would be a, a guess. Um, if I saw it on the test, I would think it was a guess. Could probably come up with two as a guess pretty quickly. 2.13. Not too bad, huh? This is a problem from your book. These are really slow horses, I think. Uh, after robbing a bank in Dodge City, a robber gallops off at 14 miles an hour. Yep. <laughs> Ten minutes later, the marshal leaves in hot pursuit at 16 miles an hour. What, what was he doing for the ten minutes? I <laughs> drink it, okay. Maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's studying the wanted poster. Maybe he was gambling, eating donuts and cookies. It was somebody's birthday. <laughs> All right. So we got Dodge City. Robert takes off 14 miles per hour. Ten minutes later. Marshall takes off at 16 miles per hour. What kind of problem is this? Great distance time. What's the same? What's the same? What's the same? Distance is the same. They're go both gonna when they when the robber 
is overtaken by the marshal, they will be the same distance from Dodge Center, won't they? So, rate times time is equal to that distance. So their distances should be the same. We'll set them equal to each other. Let's write an expression for the distance of the marshal. What is the marshal's rate? 16. Do you know the time? No, nope, that's what we're trying to figure out. How long does it take? So 16t would be the marshal. Equals. What's the rate of the robber? 14 times. Hmm. Oh, good idea. T plus 10, but not 10. One sixth. So, why one sixth? Because we're measuring miles per hour, so 10 minutes would be one sixth of an hour. So, <clears throat> the amount of time that the uh, marshal is traveling is, is T number of minutes. Okay. The amount of time that the robber is traveling is the same time that the marshal is traveling, but add another 10 minutes on that, or a sixth of an hour. Okay. So that's how we set that up. Now it's just simple algebra. 16t is equal to 14t plus 14 over 6. Subtract my 14t. 2t is equal to 7 thirds. Instead of dividing by 2, I will talk about multiplying by 1 half. So t is equal to 7 over 6. Make sense of that? 7 over 6. What does that mean? 1 hour? 10 minutes. Does that connect for you? Up on the old noggin? Okay, flip it over. Last problem. Okay. Do you ever get tired of looking at an example, <laughs> looking at a problem in math, a word problem, and uh, not feeling like you could do it on your own, feeling like you have to resort to either an example that was written for you, or you might just be like, I, I, don't, I really don't know where to start. And a lot of people, okay, all right, we got a few raising their hands there, okay. So if you want to get to the point where you can look at a word problem and you know how to solve it, that that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of resilience. You got to be willing to make mistakes and go back and check your answer and try again. You got to have a lot of patience. Okay, I if I had a dime for every time I made a an error on a word problem, I'd be a rich man. But the difference is, is are you willing to go back and take the time to fix it and see where your mistake was? Are you willing to go down, are you willing to set the problem up incorrectly, work through it, realize you did it incorrectly, and start all brand new and say, you know what, I need a, I need a new starting point, okay? Go back to the drawing board three, four, five, six times. Um, now, the thing is, is I could give you exam. I know you guys are smart enough that if I give you an example, I can give you 400 problems like that example, and you can, you know, just do them all. But modify the setup a little bit and then what happens well you know it all falls apart right there's that time where you want it to happen where you can modify it and all doesn't fall apart you're like oh i'm going to pull from another resource of my previous learning and i'm going to put this in here so all i can do is show you as many examples as possible um, just try to expose you to different material but in the end you got that resilience this problem is uh 
It's large. It will be the largest word problem you've seen so far, probably in your life. It will be uh, stuff that will require your knowledge of geometry, uh, algebra, to put it all together. Um, and it's a great solution. But um, the setup sounds dumb because uh, uh, there's a guy walking to his umbrella. But there's great application here. So we'll set it up, and then I'll show you exactly why it's such a neat problem. Boardwalk is parallel to a 2 and... 210 feet inland from a straight shoreline. So what we have here is we've got this shoreline. Everything else in the middle is beach. And this is our boardwalk. And to show that it's water, we'll see that there's a shark out there. In fact, we'll draw a person swimming away. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we got a beach. Um, it lies 200 feet inland, the boardwalk does, from the shore. So we know that this is 210. And there's a sandy beach. And a man is standing on the boardwalk. Exactly 750 feet. Uh, right about there. from his umbrella, okay, 750 feet from his umbrella, which is right at the water. He likes to have his, you know, he likes to lay down underneath the umbrella and water will come up and be able to, you know, cool off his feet, but his head is in the sun, so it's per perfect vacation. <laughs> and then he'll be eaten by the shark. Um, the man walks four feet per second on the boardwalk and two feet per second on the sand. Does it make sense that he's slower in the sand than he is on the boardwalk? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me put it in perspective for you. It says, how far should he walk on the boardwalk before veering off onto the sand if he we uh, wishes to reach his umbrella in exactly four minutes and 45 seconds? <laughs> so he's going to walk to that point, and then he's going to veer off. Okay, that, that's what's going to happen. Now, you know, why was he on the boardwalk? He's going to get an ice cream cone. I don't know. Uh, by the time he does the math problem, the ice cream cone is going to melt, and it all time is going to be you know, worthless anyways. But that's not why these problems are set up. I'll give you one classic explanation why a problem like this would be set up. First of all, they won't give you a time, 4 minutes, 45 seconds. Um, it's just that we don't know how to do this secondary type of problem. What we'll get to in calculus is we'll set this problem up again, but it will say um, how far should he walk in order to minimize the amount of time it takes him to get to his umbrella. I mean, we would want the least amount of time, correct? And it won't be a person walking to his umbrella. Rather... He will be on the shore, all the rest will be water, and out here there will be a person drowning, and he's a lifeguard. So the question becomes, if a lifeguard spots somebody out here drowning, do they just jump in the water right away and start swimming? Probably no. But do they run all the way to that perpendicular spot and then start swimming? Probably not either. So the question is really, you know, what is a good estimation to give to lifeguards so that they can pick a spot where it's like, okay, that would be about, you know, I mean, obviously you're not going to have time to sit down and do the calculation, but to get a general idea to minimize the amount of time that the person is drowning in the water, you know, and they have calculations of this sort, okay? And, you know, that's not the only example you would apply to, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's what we try to think through, so... Um, every time we set up, uh, you know, kind of a crazy scenario, I did pull this one from your book. There's there's real life situations that, you know, come out all the time that, that we do want to investigate. We do want to investigate. We'll say the trains were a thousand meters apart, thousand miles apart. So, okay. So here we go. Let's start off first. Okay. Our rate. You can see that this is a distance rate time problem is our, what is our time be measured in here? 
Seconds. So instead of four minutes and 45 seconds, let's turn this all into seconds. Four minutes is how many seconds? 240 plus 45 would be 285 seconds. So that's what I've got. All right. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take the time on the boardwalk and add that to the time on the sand, and that time should equal 285. That's what should happen. Okay? Time on the boardwalk plus time on the sand needs to be equal to 285. Well, if this is time, I'm going to set up distance divided by time is equal to my rate. What variable do I want to solve for? If I'm expressing this in terms of time, then I, I need this, a representation of time. So rate times time is equal to distance, or time is equal to distance divided by my rate. What is his rate on the boardwalk? Four feet per second. So whatever his distance is on the boardwalk, we'll talk, call that d sub 1 over 4 plus, we don't know his distance on the sand, we'll call that d sub 2 divided by what's his time on, or what's his rate on the sand? 2. Not so bad, huh? Um... I'm going to call this x here. Sure would be helpful if I knew that whole distance, wouldn't it? Can you find that whole distance? Pythagorean's theorem, which says this distance squared plus 210 squared is 750 squared. So we'll do 750 squared minus 210 squared will be this squared. Right? Let's set it up. Square at the answer, and we get 720. If that entire distance is 720, and we've called this x, what would be this distance? 720 minus x. So now I know his distance on the boardwalk. It's 720 minus x. Now I need to know d sub 2. That's his distance on the sand right here. I just need to write it in terms of x. Well, I have x here. I have 210 here. What could I do to find this distance? Pythagoras, again, x squared plus 210 squared square root. I can't take the square root of x squared. I can't take the square root of 210 squared because there's a plus sign in the middle. If you do that, you know, cut off an arm, right? So, but if we did know what x was, then we could take the square root of all that and we would get the right answer. So that distance is the square root of x squared plus 210 squared over what? 2 is equal to 285. There's the setup, folks. The rest is just ordinary algebra. I know it looks bad, but this isn't. And this is something you're expected to know how to do now because you've solved problems like this before. What part of this don't you like right now? Yeah, the square root and the fraction. So let's go ahead and get rid of the fractions, and we'll get rid of the square root. If I multiply through by 4, you can see that that's going to go away, 720 minus x. 4 divided by 2. 2, so 2 roots of x squared plus 210 squared equals 4 times 285. So 1140. Somebody doing this?
All right. So now you've solved equations before that have square roots. What do you have to do if you solve an equation with square root? Yes. Yeah. 4 divided by 2 is? So I have to put the 2 in front. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So 1 times all that is that. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times all that. 4 times 1140. Foster, same thing. See it now? You would write this as 4 over 2 and simply reduce it to 2 over 1. Okay, so if you're solving a square root, what do you have to do? Square both sides. Before I square both sides, everything that doesn't have a square root goes over on the other side. So I take this and I'm going to have 2 roots of x squared plus 210 squared is equal to, uh, if I add the x, I got positive x, subtract the 720, 1140 minus 720. What? 420? You got two options now. We'll see if you choose the same one as the last two hours did. You can square both sides now or you can divide by two. I would have square both sides, but that's fine. That's fine. Do whatever you want. It, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. It's a horse apiece. Just whatever your preference is. Now what to do both sides? Square goes away. Left with x squared plus 210 squared equals... Okay, x over 2 times x over 2. x squared over 4. So I, because I have to foil this out, right? So then I'm going to have x over 2 times 210 plus 210 times x over 2. What's x over 2 times 210? What's 1 half of 210? 105x plus 105x. 210x. What's 210 times 210? 210 squared. See why I write 210 squared? Yeah. Question. No? <laughs> Gotta ask or I don't know. Okay, you got a question, stop me and ask. Well, we got 210 squared. This is what we have. Look it. I have, I have 210 squared on both sides. So what can I do? Get rid of it. I have a quadratic. How do you solve quadratics? You got three options. CTS. Quadratic formula. Or factor. Okay. Let's factor it. It's easy. This is 1x squared, right? Or 4 over 4x squared. Let's subtract the 1 over 4x squared over the other side. What do I have left? 3 fourths x squared. As we subtract this one over, subtract the 210x. What can you factor out? What's this solution? Multiply both sides by four thirds. Two ten times four thirds. X is zero, X is two eighty. What does that mean? We don't know until we look back and see how we set up the problem. Now, I'll tell you that I chose this length here to be x. I could have chosen this to be x. However, I feel it gets messier 
if you choose this to be x, okay? So x is 0 or 280. If x is 0, what's 720 minus 0? So that means he would walk 720 and then go in, and he would get there in 4 minutes and 45 seconds. So he could walk 720 feet or 720 minus 280. Or he could walk 440 feet and then turn in, and he would get there in exactly 4 minutes and 45 seconds. So he's got two options, okay? Obviously, nobody's going to do this to get to an umbrella. But every time you see a problem that's set in a crazy solution, there's an extremely important uh, situation that can be set up as well. So two answers. These are both correct. And I know that problem takes a while. But I've seen the past three years students come through these classes and, you know, I would say a good at least two-thirds of students can get through these problems, okay? But that's the measure as you move forward. If I want you to be able to do this level of calculus, I have to be able to have you do this level of these type of word problems. So we can't simply just do, um, you know, problems where you got a marshal galloping off against a bandit you know we got to do other stuff as well that's going to require a little bit more so i've got two additional problems to put to your assignment today and uh after that that will be it you'll have time on monday to work and ask questions the study guide key is finished and uh study guide on tuesday test on wednesday question So here, as I factor it, I've got x times 3 quarters x minus 210. So this x is 0, right? Yes. Schaefer, 3 quarters x minus 210 equals 0. Add the 210, then multiply both sides by 4 over 3. 210 times 4 divided by 3 is 280. Plug 280 back in, 720 minus 280, 440. Most students, most students, that doesn't mean all, that means more than 50% need to go back and watch the video again in order to get this type of problem. So, go to YouTube, set a date this weekend with your mathematics, and get it done.